is Ronald Reagan when you need him. The Malar Library on Portland State University campus reopened more than four months after pro-Palestinian protesters broke in and caused more than a million dollars in damage. Can you imagine? From the night of April 29th to May 2nd earlier this year, the Malar Library remained under protesters' control after dozens broke in, destroyed computers, tables, flooring. They graffitied the place, of course, causing an estimated $1.2 million of total damage. On the morning of May 2nd, Portland police made their way inside the heavily fortified library and went floor to floor, evicting everybody inside. Officers arrested 30 people. Six were students at PSU. And we currently see this happening all over the country, too often truly disturbing, that's for sure. Here with me to discuss this is campus reform correspondent and student at Pennsylvania State, that's Penn State, Kelly Ogunbor. Kelly, nice to have you here. Look, um, these kids broke in. They destroyed, and they weren't even all students. And a few people got arrested, but I don't think any of it stuck. I don't think the $1.2 million came out of anybody's pocket, but the people of Oregon, the taxpayers, because it's a public university. And I think they got stuck with it. Thank you for being here. What What do you make of it, this, uh, this whole attack on the library? Yeah, not only is it, uh, not only is the bill being, being put on taxpayers uh, who are funding this public university, but also students who attend this university who are paying tuition, who had nothing to do with the said, what people would call protest, what I would call occupy, uh, an occupation, which is not protected speech uh, by the First Amendment. Uh, yeah, um, ridiculous. You know, burning down a building, breaking glass, destroying computers, that's not First Amendment stuff. That's vandalism. That's that's criminal stuff, isn't it? It surely is, but this is nothing new. Um, the Leadership Institute's campus reform has been has been covering this this for now, and this is not the only protest that's happened, uh, especially being anti-Israel at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. There was also protests that vandalized multiple buildings, or at UPenn, and I institution that led to students desecrating uh, a Benjamin Franklin statue. The thing, though, is Benjamin Franklin has nothing to do with what is going on in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas. So it really makes you think, what are these students up to? Well, what are they being taught? I mean, that's my question. You're at Penn State. I don't know what they teach at Penn State compared to Portland State, but it just seems that, you know, they're not being taught, you know, accurate history for, for starters. Um, Callie, well, where do you think the students get these wild ideas, if not from the professors and the garbage that they're fed on some of these campuses? Yeah, I completely agree. I think it definitely does start on the campus. We have to realize that uh, this is just a, a farce, a facade. People are using this war in the Middle East as an, as an excuse to cover up their anti-Western, anti-American sentiment. Um, that's the reason why Benjamin Franklin's statue was desecrated. It has nothing to do with what's actually happening in the Middle East, but more and more that people don't like America. They don't like Western values or the morality that this great nation stands for. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, too often, I don't know if you see it at Penn State, maybe you do, um, this idea just to hate America. Just to hate America. You know, America is this, America is that. America is the most successful government and nation in world history. The longest continuous government in world history. What is it, 247 years, whatever it is. And uh, here we are. Anyhow, I hope things turn around. I hope that uh, this has been a, not just Portland State, but all of these uprisings and rioting and taking over of campus has woken some folks up, Kelly. I'll give you the last word. I do so too, but I don't think anything will change unless uh, university administrations finally take a stand against these occupations as soon as they begin, instead of apologizing like Columbia interim president for using law enforcement. Yeah. Kelly Ogunbar, thank you so much uh, for being here. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you.